Hey guys, welcome back to Honeycomb Manila. Today we are talking about this. This is the Kinto Iced Coffee Jug 1.2 liters. And the question we're gonna answer today is, does it make good coffee? Yes, it can, but not if you follow the instructions. But I do wanna say that if you are enjoying our content, do smash that subscribe button and the like button to follow along with all the other stuff that we've done in coffee, in sneakers, all the stuff that we cover here in Honeycomb, Manila. Uh, follow along on Instagram as well. I am at Keo Kosha on Instagram and follow at Daily Drink Mag, which is our blog where we post all of our stuff about drinks content. And finally, do follow at Honeycomb Manila, which is this place, our studio in Double Dragon Plaza. So with all that said, Let's talk a bit about the Kinto Ice Coffee Jug 1.2 liters. It's an interesting device. Apparently, you can put it in the fridge lying down. We tested it, that works. You just gotta make sure it's got the tight seal on there. You just put the coffee inside this central container. I'm gonna open up the top. And then there's this little container here and that's your filter. You put the coffee into here and seal that up. Pour water in and you're good to go. Now, according to the little instruction thing, it says that you're supposed to put 70 grams of liquid into here and then fill up water until you get to the top. I think that that is a little bit too little coffee, in my opinion. Uh, the other thing that we found was that the grinds that you have to use for this have to be very, very coarse for no, no fines to make it out from the filter into the cold brew. There was only one grinder here that ground really uh, the, the coarseness that we wanted to grind at, and it is the Breville Smart Grinder set at its top grind setting, which is 60 uh, for a percolator. So if I press a button, you can actually see that it says grind size 60. Uh, and we're actually gonna press that button a few times to get our coffee out. So let's do that now. Whoops. It doesn't fit. So we have here ground 100 grams of coffee, ground very, very coarse. And I don't know if you can see that in this camera, just how coarse this coffee is. It's very coarse. In fact, it's 60, which is the most coarse that this grinder goes to. And the reason we did that was because we really wanted as few uh, fines to make it out of this plastic filter inside the device into the coffee. So let's take this out and we'll measure in our coffee. And then I'm actually gonna put this in first. And 99.6, so we lost about, uh, let's see if we can get it out. There we go, exactly 100 grams coming out of the Breville Smart Grinder. Just had to little, give it a little tap on the top. So there we have the, we have our coffee now in there. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour water to make it up to the top of this device. And I'm gonna pour it through the coffee so that uh, I'm sure that everything gets saturated right away. So we have some cold water and I like to do these cold brews with cold water, especially since we're gonna be putting this whole thing in the fridge and it means that we're gonna have a stable, uh, we're gonna have a relatively stable temperature throughout the entire brew process. And I'm not gonna tear my scale so that I know what the total uh, amount of, of uh, ingredients that I put in are. And I'm expecting it to be at around one kilo from our from our experimentation with this thing. So you can actually see it starting to, all the coffee starting to get wet inside that filter. Now, when we do get up to one kilo, that's the equivalent of one liter. 
and that means that our ratio is going to be around 9 to 1. Now, when selecting a coffee for cold brew, especially with this method, I found that it, it's wise to use older coffees that have totally degassed. And that's because the, the coffees don't absorb as much water, but also that woodiness, that stale flavor that you get from older beans when you brew them using a hot method, you just don't get them when you're using a cold brew method. So it's, it's a good way to to use that coffee that maybe you weren't able to use during that period. Also, using a coffee that, that's a little older, usually it's a little less absorbent or it'll retain uh, less water than, the, than otherwise. And me, I like that because it, it makes it easier to, to drain out the filter when you're done. And I would also say that uh, you get a little bit more yield as a result because when you lift up the filter, there's not so much water stuck inside. You don't have to wait for it to drip down. And kind of the point of this thing is that it's easy to do. So if it becomes difficult, what's the point, right? All right, so we're now at 850 and 950. So yeah, we're right on target to get to one liter, which would make it a one to nine ratio for this cold brew, which is kind of the ratio of cold brew that I usually like in any brewing method, any cold brewing method, I should say. And 96, 1000. All right, so as you can see, it's pretty much filled up. That is one liter of, of coffee in total. Uh, meaning the water and the grounds and we're gonna seal it up pop this top on the top it is important to align the top of the uh, of the spout to this little groove there and then we seal the whole thing up and this is gonna go in the fridge actually sidewards we can actually fit it in our fridge standing up but because it says that it can do it sidewards we're gonna do it sideways just to see if it can be done uh, to save space. And that's it. Uh, you don't need to agitate, but you could. There would be nothing wrong with that. According to the instructions, it says that you should put it in the refrigerator for about eight hours. Uh, I found that with this recipe, you don't get the best results in eight hours. I like this with 12 hours or more. So we're actually gonna pop it in, into the refrigerator for about 12 hours it doesn't have to be exactly that amount of time, uh, but basically we're filming this at night. When you come back to work in the morning, we're gonna pull out that filter and taste the coffee and uh, let's do that now. Coffee's been sitting inside of the Kinto coffee jug cold brew thingy overnight. Uh, we left it on its side and throughout the times we've been using it, it hasn't really leaked as long as the that little filter device is in there. But this last round overnight, it leaked about maybe 3 ml, so just a little bit of drip. Now, I'm actually not 100% sure if that's leaked because the water seemed to be pretty clear so I don't know if that just leaked right away and then stopped or like that was some sort of weird condensation thing going on inside of the fridge uh, I'm not sure it didn't make a mess inside of the fridge and it's pretty much the same volume of water that we're expecting or the same amount of cold brew that we usually expect from this brew method all right so let's open it up and taste uh, what we got now from experience this is gonna be about 780 maybe uh, ml of cold brew now that we're done. Take out the cap. And then I'm just gonna lift this, pull it out. And you really should let it drip down to 
you know, maximize the amount of cold brew that you get, but this is kind of a hassle to do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it into another container and I'm gonna let that drip through down and just pour it back in when we're done here. Now, when tasting these cold brew methods, I actually don't like to focus on flavor profile because I find that flavor profile is super specific to the coffee. And what I want to know really is, does this method make a good cold brew in terms of uh, mouthfeel and total flavor extraction or, or concentration, I guess you could say, or intensity is probably another good word. You know, it doesn't use any, you know, really doesn't use that much agitation or anything. It just sits in the cold brew and, you know, steeps overnight. So let's taste it. This is a good cold brew. It's not dilute. You can't taste like that weird separation of this tastes like water and this tastes like cold brew. No, it, full, it feels like a full uh, bodied, clean, surprisingly clean, uh, well-balanced cold brew. Good mouth feel. Surprisingly clean, I say, because usually I like to make my cold brew using paper filters with like an immersion and then we pour it through like a, a paper cone filter and I find that that makes for a really nice clean mouth feel that I prefer. But I am very pleasantly surprised at how little to no sediment there is inside of this brewer as long as you're using those very high, um, those very coarse, I should say. Uh, settings on your grinder. You can see that it's dripped down and that's how much got left behind inside of the inside of the filter device and that might drip a bit more and we'll transfer that back into the device. Now I think that this is pretty obvious but I'm gonna say it anyway. Don't leave this thing inside of your cold brew. That's gonna. That's not gonna work out well. Uh, you can take this and clean it. Cleaning is relatively easy. Uh, it, it helps a lot if you have a knock box. We do have a knock box. You turn it over, you knock it through, and uh, that takes all of the coffee out. But you still need to do a rinse. So what I do is, I usually do the rinse, and then if there are little grounds inside, I'll filter those out again through a a napkin filter is what I say. I take a paper napkin and I filter the water through it using like a V60 cone or something uh, just to keep those grounds out of my uh, out of my sink. That's how it works. Now if you're done, you seal this up. You can put this back in the fridge. I will say that uh, do not store this on its side anymore after you've brewed. Um, the instructions say that you can, but I found that it just doesn't work. Like you want to store it vertically now that you've finished brewing because uh, it really might leak once you've removed this thing inside and this thing kind of acts as a stopper, limiting the pressure up against the lid. And uh, once you've taken that out, uh, I, you really can't say that it's going to stay, you know, sealed very tight. And you don't want to over tighten it because you'll ruin the device. All right, so I just wanted to show how I like to enjoy cold brew. This is a chilled glass with some ice inside. And then over here, we have a little garnish. And this is a dehydrated lemon. And that'll add just a little bit extra aroma and luxury to your cold brew. So the nice thing about, about storing your cold brew cold like this, uh, or brewing it cold in the fridge, is that when you put it in ice, the ice doesn't all melt and dilute. And then we'll put this just on top like that. And here we have a nice cold brew with a little garnish of dehydrated lemon. It's pretty good. All right, so that's been the Kinto iced coffee jug 1.2 liter device. Thank you again to Kinto for sending this over. Um, they did send it over. We did not buy this. We will be sending it back. This is what we refer to as our review unit in the biz. So um, yeah, that's our review. We like it. Is it worth your money? It is worth your money. It is a good thing to buy if you want to get into cold brew for personal consumption at home and you want it to be super duper easy. It is super duper easy. It is very clean. My recommendation is just steep it longer. Uh, don't pay too much attention to this. Steep your coffee longer. Make sure it's really uh, coarsely ground and put more coffee inside. This is a one is to nine ratio 
versus the recommended, I think it was 70 grams that they said to put in there. So it says, yeah, 70 grams maximum to the one liter of water that you put inside. Dual one is to nine at least, and that will give you a really good mouth feel when you're done. Our coffee in here was a uh, Brazil coffee that I roasted in a popcorn popper. Uh, if you would like to know about that, let me know. Um, it's not the most successful of experiments that I've done. Uh, we've been, we did a popcorn popper, we did the turbo oven. Um, neither one of those made really great coffee. And uh, it's good to note, when you don't have fantastic coffee, cold brew is a really good way to brew it because you're not, you're not you know, very aggressively extracting a lot of the flavors that might be undesirable in a pour over, uh, but work okay as cold brew. Cold brew is a very forgiving brew method. I think that's the right word. Uh, it is forgiving and it is for the patient. How are you enjoying your cold brew? How do you make your cold brew? Do you use a method like this? Do you use this specific jug? I do want to know your thoughts. So let me know in the comments below or send me a DM on Instagram. I am at KO Kosh on Instagram. You can also follow at Daily Drink Mag on Instagram and at Honeycomb Manila, which is this, our co-working studio here, where we drink coffee like this and get a lot of nice uh, work done every day on various projects with different people who work here. If you want to know more about that, follow along on Instagram, send me a DM or comment below and subscribe. That helps a lot. All right, I wish you guys good luck. I wish you guys great health. I wish you guys fantastic coffee in 2021. Peace.